Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing with the treasure chest. We'll be adding some rigid bodies so that the coins and the diamonds burst out of the chest. So if you want to know how to make these objects and animate them then do look at the previous episodes. And if you like what I do, I've got a character course available for beginners. Links are in the description. Do also check out my playlist section and there's links to other videos in the description as well that will help you. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time and we want to make the coins and the diamonds burst out of the chest. I'll just play the animation. So the movement of the chest is going to influence the coins and the diamonds. Let's go back to layout mode for this and out of isolation mode with forward slash on my numpad. So we're going to have to resize the coins and the diamonds. So I'll just time lapse me doing that. And in fact, I have to choose which coin as well. I think the brighter one looks more fun. And then move them over the chest so that they fall inside of it. And that's great. So we don't really need to see the bones anymore. So I'll just hide those. And now we're ready to add some physics. Now it's worth mentioning that physics are a bit glitchy and can be frustrating at times and it took me a while to get to this stage of being able to do a tutorial where I felt reasonably comfortable that people wouldn't get too lost. There's a lot of experimentation needed and from what I hear the blender physics isn't as good as perhaps other programs but that could be down to my lack of understanding. Okay so we'll start with the coin. I'll click on the coin and the physics properties can be found at the bottom here. If I click on those what we need is a rigid body that adds sort of weight to it and it will fall down. So I'll click on that. And now if I bring my playhead back to the beginning and you can see it falls down there. Now I'd forgotten there was a keyframe on there. I'm not sure why I put that there, but I can just click on that, delete the keyframe and now resize it again and move it into position. Okay, so at the moment you can see it just falls down through the floor because none of these objects have physics to them. So I need to add physics to the treasure chest as well. So let's do that. I'll bring my playhead back to the beginning first, click on the bottom of the chest and add a rigid body. So now when I press play, they both fall through the floor. So let's bring it back to the beginning again. So somehow we need the bottom of the chest to stay where it is. And we come across to the rigid bodies and we change the type. So it's not active, so moving around loads, it's actually passive. Okay, so we press play and it's working. But our coin's doing something very strange. So let's see that again. Our coin is staying exactly where it is and wobbling around. Now what I didn't do with the treasure chest is one, I didn't set it to animated because it's an animated object. So if you've got any animation added to your object, you tick the animated box. So let's bring it back to the beginning and test it out. That's good, but our coin has disappeared. Let's just zoom out and see if we can see it. It's flown up in the air which is kind of what it's supposed to do. But for some reason, if I come back to here and gently move this across, it's sticking to the top of our box. You can't really see it particularly well, but if I just hide the top for a moment and play, you can see that the coin isn't actually going into the bottom of our chest. So I'll press Alt H to bring the top back and hide the bones. In fact, I'll put the bones on a different layer. So M to move to layer, new collection, bones. That way I can hide them nice and easily. So with the bottom of the chest selected, there are some other options down here. Under collisions, we've got the shape of the collision object. So you can see you can change this to something like a box and it gives us a box around our object. And the object center isn't quite in the middle, so the box is sort of slightly above. You can have a sphere a capsule, and these are all the collider. So things colliding with the bottom of the chest will actually hit the collider first. So for example, if we have this capsule on, and I'll just hide the top for a moment, and we press play, it pings out of the chest because it's trying to get outside the collider. And that's what happens if you start an animation and things are right on top of each other, they sort of explode apart as the colliders interact. So back on the bottom of the chest, we've got an option under the shape of the collider. We've got convex hull, which is the original, and we've also got mesh. Convex hull uses the shape of the mesh, but it doesn't take into account any crevices like we have in ours. Whereas if I go across the mesh, it will actually use the shape of the mesh entirely. So this hole will be counted. So now if I start playing, you can see the coin goes into the chest and pings up out of the chest and falls down through the floor just there, as you can see. That means for the chest objects, we will have to set this to passive, animated, and mesh. So it's passive, so it doesn't fall down with gravity. It's animated because we've added animation to it, and it's got a mesh shape, 
so that things can fall into it. So I'll bring my playhead back to the beginning. I'll show my top and I'll click on that, add a rigid body. It's a passive rigid body, so it doesn't fall down. It's animated, so the animation works with it and it is set to mesh, so things will fall into it. The last one is the lock at the front here. And if I add a rigid body to this, again, passive, again, it's animated. But this time, because it doesn't need anything falling into it, I could perhaps get away with a box on this one. Let's have a look. Maybe I can get away with a box. The reason I'm thinking that is because the mesh is quite expensive for Blender to render. The good thing is we've got a low poly object, so it won't be too bad. But the more complex these shapes get, the longer they'll take to render. And when we start adding more and more coins and diamonds, then it will really slow down. So I'm going to leave that on box. Also, when I animate, you'll see that it flings out of the way. And we probably really won't notice things hitting off the edge there too badly. OK, so I'll bring it back to the beginning. Obviously, this diamond has a keyframe on it as well. So that went back to where it was. So I'll delete that keyframe scale it down and move it into my treasure chest. And we need the diamonds to have some physics to them now so that they do the same thing as the coin. So I'll zoom in a bit and I'll scale that one down just a touch. So they're slightly different sizes. And for this one, I'll add again a rigid body. And we don't really need to change any settings. We've got an active rigid body, so it'll fall down and interact with the passive objects. We're probably going to need a convex hull because it's such an unusual shape, but luckily it's low poly, so it shouldn't be too bad. We don't need a mesh though, because it's got no sort of holes in it for things to fall into. So convex hull is gonna be fine. So that one should be okay. We can always test it. Go back to the beginning, start it off and up it flies. And interestingly, our coin has fallen through our chest. And that's where the physics in Blender can get a little bit awkward and weird, but we'll try and sort that out later. I'll zoom out a bit and see where our diamond's going. Flying up in the air, and miles and miles up in the air and falling out again, which is another problem we'll have with our physics, unfortunately. So back to the beginning, back into our chest. I'll hide the top quickly so I can see the other diamond, which is this one here. Just check that, yep. So add a rigid body to that as well. And again, that's all fine. Let's play this and ping it upwards and they fly upwards fine. Okay, so why are they exploding upwards so far? I'll bring back the top of my chest and we'll go to wireframe so we can see what's happening to the objects. So the chest is jiggling about and this time they're not flying up so far. Isn't it strange? So we might be able to get away with it. But we need to sort out why that coin is dropping through the middle there. So I'll go back to the beginning. What I also need to do is add a rigid body to the floor. So add a rigid body. This time it's passive because it's not falling down and it's not animated. And this time as well, we can have a box for this one because we're going to keep it nice and simple. So let's play this animation again, see what happens. Well, it's looking a little bit better, but the coin's still falling through the chest. So stop and back to the beginning. And by the way, spacebar is the shortcut for play and stop play. Okay, so let's see what's happening to the coin. It's hitting the bottom and we're moving around and then it falls through. Now, if I click on the coin, there's a couple of things we can do. One, we don't actually need a convex hull. We can have a cylinder. And if I zoom in, you can see that the cylinder, if I change between convex hull and cylinder, you can see that there's very little difference between the two. So that's great. We'll keep a cylinder for that. So let's go back, back to the start and see if that makes too much difference. And yes, at the moment that is making a difference. So that's good. Now there's a few other things we can change. There's sensitivity. Under there, we've got a margin and that can help objects that collide with each other not to fall through. So we can tick that and I can press play and we'll see how that affects it. And one of the diamonds has shot up miles and the other one hasn't. So it's working reasonably well. Now you'd think that changing the weight perhaps of the objects under the mass might stop them flying up so much. So if I change the weight to 100 kilograms or 1,000 kilograms and press play, it still shoots up miles. And actually the coin's falling through now. <laughs> so you can see the difficulty you might have with this. So I change that back to one kilogram and go back to the start. What we can do is the movement of our chest 
is quite fast upwards, so it's flinging it up in the air quite dramatically. So I can bring my armature back. So select my armature, go to pose mode, make sure my base bone is selected, and instead of flying upwards that high, we can press G then Z and bring it down just a touch. So it doesn't have such a violent explosion. Back to the beginning and press play. And are we any better? A little bit, it's still flying up in the air. <laughs> so we can always go to here, grab Z, bring it down and make some adjustments. To test your adjustments, you always do need to go back to the beginning um, so it can recalculate the physics. The last thing we can do is not make it so violent by spreading these out slightly. I'll select all my bones and select these and move them across very slightly so it's not so violent again. And always go back to the beginning. There we go. It's slightly less dramatic. Back into object mode with the bones. I'll scale the floor up a bit so the things can fall on the floor a bit better. And now we need to make more of these objects. So back to the beginning. I'll click on my coin to start with and let's duplicate that. So Shift D to duplicate, move them into slightly different positions and just make sure I'm not going through the top too much. Otherwise they'll sort of explode. I'll hide the armature quickly. And in fact, just so I can create some more easily, I'll hide these and let's grab the coins and duplicate them. So I'll move them across to the side here and duplicate them this way and move them across the side here. And it's best to build up a bit slowly so you can see any errors easily. And the diamonds. Okay, so bring back my other objects and let's see what the damage is. Okay, that's actually working better than I thought it would, but we haven't got that many objects, but it is working at least. I'm going to change the end time to 250 so we can see more of the animation. Still pretty violent, but it is kind of fun. The next problem we're gonna have <laughs> <laughs> is that the coins never settle down. And it's a really difficult one to solve, strangely. And I haven't really found a great way of solving that. You've got surface responses here. You can change the bounciness, but that probably won't make much difference. A bit more friction, perhaps. But you'll have to play around a bit and see how you get on. Okay, so what if I want to make some changes now that I've got lots of objects? Well, with my treasure chest, I'm actually going to move that to a new collection as well, so it's a bit simpler. New collection chest and press OK. Now I can hide that. So if I've got one object that I make some changes to over here and perhaps test out the friction or bounciness and so forth and the collision margins, well I can select all the other objects, make sure that's the active object and then come up to object under rigid bodies and copy from active. Therefore any changes I've made will be added to all the other ones. Now, if you have any further problems with things falling through floors and so forth, you can come up to the scene properties over here and rigid body world. And increasing the steps per second, if you hover over it, number of simulation steps taken per second, higher values, more accurate, but slower. So you can increase these numbers and test out, and that may help you. But for now, I think that's enough for this tutorial. You'll have to play around a bit and see how you get on with your exploding chest. Good luck with this, do share your results and let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.